Coming up on Network Africa. South Africa's state security minister visits the scene of an explosion that killed eight people outside Cape Town. DR Congo Supreme Court bars opposition leader Jean-Pierre Bemba from running in the presidential election due in December. And the EU releases 138 million euros for Africa's Lake Chad region. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Teniola Shiboali. We begin today in South Africa, where the state security minister has visited the scene of an explosion in Somerset West, outside Cape Town. At least eight people were killed in a blast at a munitions factory late on Monday. It's not clear at this stage what caused the explosion, but residents reported hearing a loud bang which rattled doors and windows. The authorities are carrying out investigations and making sure that the site is safe. Let's get more on this story now from a South African journalist, Bazukule Diko. Bazukule, thank you for joining us on the program. Good evening. Good afternoon, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what more can you tell us about the explosion? At this moment, just as you um, inferred in your intro, the Danau um, CEO this morning held a press briefing, Danau CEO Norbert Schultz, indicating that investigations are still underway, that at this moment they cannot pinpoint what exactly co caused this blast and that they will release the information as they get it. So we understand that firefighters have been searching for more people believed to be trapped inside the building. Are there fears that the death toll could rise? Indeed, there are fears that the death toll will, will rise, but um, what we saw during this morning's press briefing is that the CEO, accompanied by the, the, the minister, um, was quite um, cautious in terms of confirming what, uh, what could be the death toll with regards to this incident. They, they, they have uh, pleaded with South Africans to please be patient and not to jump to any conclusions and that at this point no information is available but what they can guarantee is that out of the 400 buildings in that complex in Somerset West only one particular building was affected and that as far as they know um, many employees um, escaped un um, unscathed. So what we do know at this moment is that definitely eight people have definitely lost their lives. Eight families somewhere, somehow they're out there are weeping and crying as they mourn their loved ones. Family members were informed by being called into a boardroom as many had gathered outside the facility to hear news of what had occurred because that blast that you described in your intro apparently what could be felt kilometers away with people describing how even pots and pans and teacups off their tables fell to the floor alerting them that something quite enormous had occurred and rushing to the scene to find out more. So will more people, more families be in mourning? We don't know at this point, but the fears do remain. So what's the mood like with the reactions? Are they afraid that this could be terror related? No talks of terror were mentioned. The, what, the word we continuously heard was this is an accident, that the particular building that this blast occurred in is where workers involved in mixing propellants for ammunition um, work in. Uh, apparently, this is where they were blending about five propellants uh, uh, that are used in ammunition. So at this moment, it's being investigated as an internal accident, one of a devastating magnitude and one of serious concern, but no fears at this point that it could be a third force. 
So this explosion comes after cases of some deadly mosque attacks. Could, in your opinion, could South Africa be facing a security threat at the moment? It would be difficult to try connect those different incidents. This facility that we are speaking about is not uh, uh, the kind of facility that just anybody can walk into. Ryan Mattel Denal is a place that even family members just yesterday after this blast, they themselves cannot enter it. It is a, a national uh, a key point. It, it has incredibly tight security. Unlike the mosque attacks where just anybody can walk in without being questioned or vetted. So at this moment, South Africa is, is not um, communicating to us as citizens that they, we should be fearful or that they themselves are fearful that terror uh, could be on our shores. But certainly some people might be wondering and hoping that as information is received by the company, they will share it with us and dispel any fears that might be quietly um, growing in our minds. South African journalist Bazikule Diko, thank you for keeping us updated on that.